Hello, everyone, and welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy, Ivorian Spice, and welcome to the Catch Up Volume 33. Another week, of course, we had a bad week for Manchester United, not the best of week last week with two draws, disgusting. Two points dropped against Chelsea, guys. So right now, as a Manchester United fan, you shouldn't really be pleased right now. I can understand your frustration, especially get the match yesterday against Chelsea. But yes, guys, we're back again with the man them, of course. We've got a Mook. We've got Jex. And Jex, what are you saying, my G? How you been this week? I've been well, bro. Um, Football-wise, it's been awful. Two nil-nil draws. We just hope for better next week. But yeah, I'm good, bro. Thank you for asking. And Amok, man, what are you saying, fam? How you been this week, man? Yeah, I've been good, man. Been good. Like, I've got forced myself to be in a good mentality. But like Jake said, football-wise, it's been really poor for us. Like, you can't have two drills like that in two games. It's just not good enough. Definitely. And of course, guys, remember, if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe, smash that like button. Remember to share because sharing Ivorian Spice is caring. And of course, we have hit a new milestone, guys. 2,000 subscribers, of course. Thank you very much, guys. Yes, the channel likes to thank you. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing, guys. 2,000 has been a journey. Of course, it's on the road to 3K now, you get me? Of course, guys, if you are new to the channel, this is a show that we talk about the latest debate, the previous match that we've just seen. Of course, we talk about the Premier League weekend roundup and the hot topic news, if we have anything to talk about regarding that. And of course, this week in this show, we'll be talking about the game against Chelsea, Manchester United, nil nil draw, disgusting performance people can say that oh we played well in terms of those the tempo of the game but for me hell no we didn't I have standards I have standards and we're gonna dive in straight into the Premier League weekend roundup a couple of our ops won of course um, none of our ups lost none of our ups lost you know so it's not the best week in terms of Premier League table in terms of Premier League results for Manchester United we end it up with the match preview against Crystal Palace on Wednesday. And of course, the Manchester Derby, those noisy neighbours, again, away at the Etihad, or should I say the Empty Had Stadium. Yes, guys. And let's go straight into that match, that match against Chelsea. Chelsea nil, Manchester United nil. Manchester United doing absolutely F all in front of um, whoever was in goal, Mendy, I was about to say Aspilaqueta or Aspilaqueta, whatever his name is. But yes, doing effort towards that goalkeeper. That goalkeeper, as I said before, could have went home, you know. Could have went home and came back at 90 minutes. And we have not done anything towards Chelsea's goal. To horrendous performance in terms of the attack and display. Defensively, we was well. We did well, although we've had, you know, we had, as I say, Magaloff, you know, at the back. We did well in terms of pushing forward. Um, our win backs as well. Bambisaka, Bambi are nice as always. He tried, tried a thing. Luke Shaw, of course, did his best because he's forever green so far. But in midfield, McFred, unable to keep the ball, unable to keep the ball retention. Up front, non-existence. What was the point? Daniel James, I was expecting him to play because I know Oli, once he throws his boys into this, yeah, his favourite boys, he continues to play him. And again, Daniel James shows exactly why he was not in the team. Uh, Mark Trashford, the same game that you always have in every game, you know, below average. Bruno Fernandes, not being able to have any impact in the game. Again, yet again, in the big games, he hasn't showed himself. I'm walk. I want to start with you, my brother, man. How do you feel about that game, man? You talk to me, bro. What, what did you, what's your reflection on that game? I think after the match, after the did you know what we got points? I was happy with the point because obviously we're playing against Chelsea. He's got a new manager. They play with a new system that haven't lost. 
the, the confidence is super sky up. You get what I mean? So I expected this type of match. But one thing I could say, Olive always had the upper hand against this so-called manager when he was a PSG. I was thinking maybe he could have just used that way we used to play PSG against them yesterday. It could have worked, but he used different formation. Obviously, this is the Premier League. It's just... I can't, like, it's just upsetting to even talk about this. The way we play against good opposition and we haven't won any single match against the top five. It's getting scary now, though. Like, it's actually getting scary because I believe we should have won the game against Chelsea because if we deep it, we had like some nice opportunities that we could have just killed the match. Like, but like I said, that consistency with the team. You just mentioned Bruno. I was like, wow. I was actually surprised with his performance against Chelsea. You mentioned all these other names. I like, just hope the players can put this behind the back, regroup themselves, and face Crystal Palace on Wednesday. Because like we cannot really go and say that the team needs to do this because games are coming thick and fast. Like you see, they go Wednesday and they go the weekend. So we just go watch and hope that we, we get the best of whatever game we get into. And we get the positive results, which is going to be peak for us right now. Definitely, man. It's looking peak, man, especially in the big games. Jex, what about you, man? What was your take on yesterday's game, man? If, how do you feel about that game? I want to talk about the game. Um, let me get the positives out, first and foremost. I think De Gea was probably the, our man of the match, in my opinion. Sure. Uh, Lindelof and Maguire, I know you're going to hate me for that crazy Maguire, but he actually played well yesterday, you know. I already said it, they did well. Yeah, they did. They, they both did well. They, they both did, both they did, did well. Did. It's a shame that the team instructions wasn't good enough. I feel like we should have been pressing much higher up the pitch. The team should have been played much higher up the pitch. But um, yet again, facing the top side, we crumble. And I feel like that 6 1 against um, Tottenham. Huh has made Oli very scared. He doesn't want to lose like that again. And it's evident against Arsenal, City, Liverpool, all these nil-nils, one-nil loss, we haven't done anything. And it's a shame to watch. I don't want to watch any more top six games because it's pointless. We don't score goals. I think it's only against Tottenham that we scored that one goal. Since then, we haven't scored a goal in, in, seven, in six games. So um, it was a very poor game. And for me, I have to blame the manager because if we had lost that game, but we were further up the pitch, we were trying to create, it would have been okay. It would have been something we could have accepted, but it wasn't the case. We just sat back and let Chelsea play. There's another two points dropped and United fans won't be happy with that one. I'm not happy with the point personally. I would have preferred to lose and play as if we're united, not as if we're Burnley going to Stamford Bridge, you know? Yeah, trust me, man. We don't... <laughs> I know what you mean by that, man. Thanks, Jax. I fool you, st- I fool you, brother. I hear that still. Yeah. And Amut, man, how do you... F- what do you think about the tactics that Oli put out, man? Was you impressed or do you think he put out the right tactics or he could have done a bit better? I thought it could have done a bit better. It wasn't the right tactics. Because if it was the right tactics, we could have done it at Chelsea. We could have had a ball at Jack said we should have been like trying to start from up, like press up, not them chest pressing us in our own half and that. Like I said, Chelsea got I'm trying to understand why he used it. That's what I said. We face Chelsea, they've got a new manager that's using different tactics, like you know what I mean, and this is the Premier League. He's not used to this manager. So he was just trying to see what could work for him. And for some reason it worked in the way he was happy about it. But I'm not, I'm not JG and I'm not I'm going to spice you, not happy about no, it. No way. You know what I mean? But he could have just done better. At least if take one of either take uh, Fred or Mac Tom in the app and bring someone who is more creative, he can actually distribute the ball that will help Bruno. Because Bruno, you can't like I got upset yesterday, I won't play. I can't remember what time I think it was in the second half. I can't remember what time it was. Bruno got the ball from the middle and dribbled a little bit and passed it to um, uh, um, Rashford. And Bruno stayed behind. He, he did not run with Rashford. No, Bruno you normally run with players, try to intercept like your passes very quick. But he stayed behind Rashford. He knows that. What happened? What just happened? And from that point, I just felt like, I don't know what Oli, like he said, maybe his tactics. I don't know what Oli did tell them. 
we, it's evident that Oli did tell the players to defend and get a drop. So they were just using this, this handball thing as an excuse to maybe convince our fans that because it's VAR. But how many times have you ever worked first? I'm really upset it's, with it's worked, it's worked, but I a can't, whole lot of time first. In terms of the whole performance, people can't just use that VAR far. as an excuse of, oh, got nothing to do with a penalty. It. Um, throughout the whole nine minutes, we did nothing. We did nothing. Did we test the goalkeeper? No. What have we got to say for each other? That just, it just shows you evidence that Oli did not use the right tactics. Mm -hmm. He went there to defend and get a drop and probably nick the game in the latter part of the match, which they always try to do because we've got quick players and fast players that can just break on you at any given time and get a goal. That's what we used to. But like you just said the last week of your own spice, you said um, Manchester is like highlight United. Of course. Just go sit behind the computer and watch your highlights. You don't need to watch the full match. Mm -hmm. And that just says a whole lot of things about the tactics that we just said. If the tactics was good, the players were putting in the work that Jake said before, like play like how United play. You would love to watch your team uh, play all the time. Which just... The only person I can say, I'm not happy about it, just that we drew. And I can take the point, we haven't lost for how many games. That's good for his CV though. Not us as fans. <laughs> Is there a good thing to have on your CV? Not being able to win a single game against your ops, your top six in the in the regular season. Is it really? No, it's not. Jakes, what did you bro, think about the performance, bro? It was very lackluster. It was very poor, man. Like I don't understand the tactics of the manager. We, they had Giroud starting up front. Mm -hmm. Could have played much higher up the pitch. He's not exactly the quickest striker, is he? Um, no. I think the players were slightly. I think these players have that six-one in their mind because there was a couple times in that second half where we broke. I think it was even Fernandez on the right hand side. He just didn't play the ball across properly. Mm -hmm. There was a couple times as well in the middle. Fred kept losing the ball. Though he had a decent game, but he had spells where he just kept losing the ball. I was just thinking. Are you guys nervous? I don't understand. I think against these top five teams, there's something in the back of their minds. That 6-1 is haunting them. They need to, I don't know what they need to do, whether they need to pray, whether they need to do some sort of ritual. I don't know. They just need to get over that one and start playing again, opening up against these bigger teams because that performance yesterday wasn't good enough. Yeah, but the same thing as well, I have to say is that there is no instructions coming from the manager. There's no guidance of what to do. There is a, sometimes I feel like there isn't a game plan. So I, what, is it their fault when they're not, they do things that you, that irritates you? It's because they're just playing out of free will. There's no instructions, guys. Seriously, even the fact that when I see Oli in the bench, I don't see anything that comes from that dugout at all. It's hardly, it's, it's inactive. For me, I can only judge what I see. And from what I've, I've seen, I do believe it's instructions from the gaffer to say, we must, number one, not concede. And then if we can, break and score. I feel like he's always done this. The only difference is there's a lack of confidence against the top teams because those one or two chances we normally get, we're not taking them at the moment. Or we're fumbling in transition, you know? Our counter-attacking is not on point at the moment against these top teams. So that's why we're getting all these nil-nil draws. But um, it needs to change. It definitely needs to change. And we can do that against Man City on Sunday. But they've won the last 20 games, so... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I, I doubt it, man. I know his first instruction to the players is, just go out there, lads, and express yourself and enjoy yourself. You know, just do what you have to do. Because... I doubt that he tells them don't concede. Express yourself first and enjoy yourself is what Ollie tells them. If he told them to express he them, more freedom. he would have lost yesterday probably. He didn't tell no, them. He gives them more freedom. Them. That's really the difference. Trust me. The difference between Oli and Mourinho, Mourinho like he plays his good players and tell them to defend. Oli plays McTominay and Fred, which There's takes no instructions. Place. No, that's what I'm saying. Which takes space from the middle for a creative individual mm -hmm. that would be able to distribute the ball better for this place. Because you don't expect Bruno to be doing it like you said it yourself. And they don't just... they don't stay in the middle, they split apart. They leave the, the they leave midfield exposed. That's the thing. Right. There's no, no instructions. Do you know what? At the Let same me... time, these guys are big men and they're professionals, isn't it? 
Yeah. So like, there's instructions and then there's also common sense. If you want to take it, common sense starts with seven charge. players. Common <laughs> sense gets built in the training ground. That's what I've got to say. Why are you all of this, all all this back, leads back, back to training, training bro. Yo, no, no, everyone much. needs instructions. Not every but employee you, you, can rely on themselves. You have to tell your employee sometimes. You have to, a lot of managers guide certain employees because they know that they need instructions and they need to get beat on them. Certain other individuals as employees don't need that. They can work on their own. But as a team, you always need to be instructing everyone. You can't expect them to think that, oh, like, they know what they're doing. This is a big club. There's no such thing as, oh, I think they know that what they're doing. You have to ensure that you know that they're doing what they have to do. That's the thing. I don't, I don't believe that, bro. Oh, this I is feel... football, bro. This is football. Training, it's, training. You, you train and you're getting coached to play in a certain way. You get mm -hmm. me? You're always instructed. It's always by guidance. There's no such thing as, oh, just because he's... I've always spice. I've always spice. That's what you no, talk about with you football, though, because... Just, just, like just put pet. Into what you just said, we just what, did describe Pep. When you're Burnley, block. when you're Burnley, you can say, "Oh, I think they know what they're doing." No, when you're Manchester United, you're Real Madrid. You have to know what you're doing. It's the expectation. You have to know. And we've been aware of this one because that's what they always say on this so-called media, um, that Sky Sport, BT Sport, and all these other um, 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 football outlets. This is what they say. It's Manchester United. So if they, we all got the expectation, right? Can't the team deliver this expectation that's upon this team? Can I ask one question? I've been telling you guys for a long time. Do you think this squad is good enough? So I why think it's good enough? You but... the name Manchester United because that name is ancient now. Mm -hmm. Would you look at the squad and let's be honest? Let's look in the mirror now, lads. When well, Leicester won the Premier League, there's, there's a couple of joke men. Did they have the best team to win the Premier League? Mm -hmm. There's a couple of joke men, but we got. A when Leicester won the coach. Premier League, did they have the best team to win the Premier League? No, that season? no, no, one no, of no. They didn't. So, they didn't. so, so, what you just said there? If we had that, like, we are Manchester United because, like I said, this is what the media says. This is the big club or big stuff. So the expectation, it's not the expectation ain't the match yet. So if you're saying, is the players good enough? Not, they're not good enough. But Leicester won the Premier League with players less good enough than our players. We, our players are more expensive. We got the most That's expensive true. defender in the world. That's true. Let's not talk so, much. That's an expectation, right? Money doesn't mean anything, bro. No, it I means something. Because this to, that's listen, what Pop has been judged talk. on for the past four seasons. <laughs> Let me talk, bro. You can spend a billion pounds, but when you look at Maguire in his face in the changing room, he's <laughs> good enough to win the Premier League. Let's not, let's deal with us. The price tag says he's good enough to win the Premier League. The price <laughs> says he's good enough to win the Ballon d'Or. going to win you the Premier League. No, it's the player. The price tag said he's good enough to win you the Ballon d'Or, like Van Dijk. He has the, he has the same comparison as Van Dijk. He won the pre, he won the Champions League and the Premier League the following season. Eighty the Nero's fam. This this is a joke, fam. So this is what I'm saying, mm -hmm. if the club put the priorities right, like invest the money properly, stop, mm -hmm. um, 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 I don't know how to say, you you couldn't sign the player for Mourinho. Why sign this player for Oli? If that price tag. No, but you're saying that the 80 million, we should win the league with it. So we should be winning the league with Maguire. Yes, Liverpool signed Van Dijk and won the league with him. Okay, For yeah, 70 million. And the they won Champions League with him. So but we Jack, spent 80 million, 10 more million plus. We should win the Champions League too. We should win the Premier League. Common sense says we that. Spent, no, it's, I know what you're saying. I know it's, 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 it's the expectation of what they've given us fans. But we common sense say it's money. Obviously, on um, 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 this player, um, Maguire is not worth that money. And it's not up to the same quality as Van Dijk, which we been proven. So you get what I'm saying? Like, we all know this. The players are not good enough. But when you got a different manager, a different tactics, because I'm using Leicester as, as an example. Like, the manager won the Premier League with Leicester, tried all teams in the team, Premier League. He didn't win it, but he won with Leicester. So you tell, tell me, did Leicester have the best team to win the Premier League that season? No, they did not. But with the players' mindset and what's been given to them, our football changed. Since we lost Van Gaal. So what that was a one off though, bro. They haven't won it since. Yeah, you know I mean one season, yeah. Exactly. So really if Leicester can do it with less money and improve the club after they won it and give the club a new status, we why can't Manchester as a team we spend this amount of money and win titles with it? Liverpool spend the same amount of money and won titles with it. So why can't Manchester as a club 
do the same thing and win titles with it, putting the right things in the right place, putting the right structures for the club itself. Yeah, let me tell you what, that, that's just having the right person in charge, you've been hiring the wrong people. And that exactly having the right people in the right places would have been the difference. But let me just move it on to say one thing, guys. Again, back to the game. Top six, guys. Games against the top six, we've only scored one goal, one goal, two losses, five nil-nil draws. What do you guys have to say about that? That's our record. And to be serious in terms of we have ambitions to win a league title, you can't win a league title with this record. And Ollie's please, every time we draw nil-nil in these top six games, he's happy with it. He's just happy with it. Just like yesterday, as you probably said in the post-match reaction. Press conference. He was yeah. more debating about the, uh, the penalty than actually talking about what he could have done better to win the match. Deflecting. Well, he's an excellent politician, my man. My man's an like, excellent politician. But we've drawn a lot, man. All these draws against the top six, I'm fed up. It's like, I'm asking myself, what are we, bruv? Are we shot in, bruv? All these draws, bruv. We're supposed to be collecting three points these times out there. What are fives? I'm pissed off, fam. All these drawers, bro. What? We're not the local weed man, bro. No, the okra. You know, the, you know the African stew, the okra stew. Mm. They eat that food with. You know that food got drawn it, and it tastes good though. That's what's united. No, it don't taste good. Because mention that they're not supposed to be drawing like this. But what do you guys have to say about this result against the top six? Um. I think we've said it all already, you know. Um, <laughs> it's the mentality. Since that Tottenham 6-1, we're playing with a bit of fear in our hearts because we're not really attacking or counter-attacking the way we have done in the past. But to me, it's evident when we play in these top teams, they're moving to us. More time when we beat these top teams, it's because of an excellent defensive performance with great counter-attacking display. Mm -hmm. To me, that shows that the team is not good enough. I don't have high expectations. I'm not gassed over the name Manchester United. For me, let me finish, please. Mm -hmm. For me... No, no, I'm going to let you finish, bro. I look at the team. I look at things with re realism. Mm -hmm. Our squad is not good enough. Our mm -hmm. top 11 is good enough, but you can't use 11 men for 38 games. So for me... We need to get a technical tech, uh, sporting director. We need to stop wasting money because Amok had a great point earlier. We've been splashing all this piece. So the fans do expect great things because why are we wasting all this money? But it's mm. not being yeah, sure. correct. Sure. So um, these draws is down to the fact we're not good enough and also the tactics. We're just playing too defensively. We're moving like Burnley. We should be playing like we're Manchester United. That's it. And Van Gaal was right when he said that um, Oli plays defensive football just like Mourinho. Mourinho. And guess what? It's come to light now. But for me, I just think Oli's a coward in these big games now. He is a coward. You're right. That 6-1 did just make him go back to his cave and think that, bro, I'm not ready to come back out anymore, bro. Because since then, it's just been, we've lost against Arsenal and we've just been getting nil nils against the other teams. He is a coward, man. He's not willing to even die his own sword. And sometimes I ask myself, what is his own sword? Because we've never seen it. We've never seen it. This counter-attack in football cannot be the cannot be it. Like it just can't be it. It can't be the only way. Obviously, yeah. it's an option we can use it sometimes, but yeah, but when big you teams get the three or four games that you haven't won against this big team, you need to think, okay, we need to do something else, you know? And this is what he doesn't understand. Big clubs don't but if rely he was on a good manager. Football. If you was a good manager, you mm -hmm. won't let this run get to this point. You could have changed it time ago. With maybe your first three games, you say, no, this fact, I haven't done this, no. I want to win my next big, big game. Because you cannot win the Premier League title without beating these top clubs. That's just... Leicester done it. Can't, can't. Every, yeah. Everyone done it. You have to beat at least three of these top clubs yeah. for you to win the Premier League. Yes. And... We haven't done any of that. So this I'm saying, I'm, I'm happy that I can just reflect on what you've always been very adamant about. Let's wait till May and see how the table ends. Mm. 
and that's just proved everything. But I want to ask you a question, right? Why is Oli using for me mentally? I'm thinking we're using seven players as def like to, to, to defend the keeper, the four defenders, and you two holding midfielders, seven players, but you still concede and you still losing games. I, I don't get that. Like, how? <laughs> like this, it's been bugging me. This is something that actually bugged me all day yesterday you know, after the Chelsea match. I don't know if I have to say, I don't think he's good defensively as, like, well, as a defensive coach. Seven players. This seven happened against players. Leipzig. We played seven defensive players and still conceded. Said before, it just shows you the quality of the manager. And I've been adamant about Oli out. Like, just, I've, 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 been, I've said it before. Oli is not the right manager for Manchester United. Oli is not competent enough to manage this club called Manchester United. And if based on the sentiment that the club given out to these people, they're always just going to build you foundations. Because since Ferguson left, all they've done is build foundations. We haven't had any manager that came into the club and did something that changed the club. Like what Tottenham got going for them to Mourinho came in and destroyed it. What Leicester got, what Chelsea made after um, um, Mourinho left, after sacking for the second time. Like, we haven't got that. And other teams are doing it quickly, but we've taken so long. Arsenal had a blueprint behind how they play. The game became just difficult for Arsenal not to win um, the trophies, but they had a blueprint. What have we got since Ferguson left? This one, when you guys to ask yourself. So till we change, till we start building something on top of that foundation, till then it's just going to be like, like a roller coaster, like just what we've been saying. And quickly, just to end up this part, um, man of the match, don't give the match, Jex. Uh, I give it to De Gea, man of the match, De Gea. Uh, donkey. Everyone, man. Everyone. I can't pin. Everyone was poor. I just had to pick Fred. I'll give it to Fred. Is it fam? May donkey. The match goes to Ollie. Go straight up. Man of the match. Nobody. Of course. You men's are man of the match. I have to say. You. Manchester United fans are the man of the match because we have to endure this nonsense. And what about you? I give it to um, the man of the match. I give it to um, Ozzy for the hair. I think for me it was excellent. Mm -hmm. And don't give the match. Obviously, only got to take that. Got to take that L, fam. You got to take that L. Yeah. Guys. Definitely. Do let us know who you thought your man of the match was and, of course, your donkey of the match. And let us know exactly what you thought of that game against Chelsea. We move it straight into the Premier League weekend roundup. You know, match week 26, guys. And this week, we have City winning, of course, against West Ham. Arsenal winning against Leicester City. Good win for them as well. Liverpool beating Sheffield United, chefing them up in the corner as always. Spurs <laughs> winning, winning comfortably. Bell scoring two two goals. Yeah, good for him. That's our ups as well. And us, Manchester United drawing nil nil against Chelsea. Mm -mm -mm. We we just talked straight away about the game against Man City winning against, of course, who, who did they win against? Sorry, I kind of forgot. West Ham. West Ham. West Ham. West Ham. Yeah. Doing their thing again. Doing their thing again. Match died. Shame on you for not trying to replicate or emulate whatever Man City is trying to do in their camp. Because at times we look at Man City, we're like, mm, be nice. That that will be nice. All the time, that will be nice. You know, we're at that girlfriend that was it was that sees other other women getting hogged up and getting flowers and you're telling your man, that would be nice. That would be nice. You know, you know, oh, how cute. That would be nice. You know, boyfriend proposes to the girl. Oh, how cute. Looking at you, that would be nice. You know, that's us. That's, that's us. Looking at our husband, Manchin United. That would be nice, you know. Nice, isn't it? <laughs> you know, you know you what? Ask you. Yo, like Manchester City, Manchester City doing well, guys. Um, any of you guys get to watch that match? Uh, yeah, I watched. I watched a bit of that game. Uh, West Ham actually impressive, you know. And Moyes, shout out to Moyes. <laughs> um, 
the team obviously defended for most of the game, but when they were at it, they were going forward. Lingard with the assist, you know. It's just a shame that when we play Man City on Sunday, I don't think it will be as tight as an affair as that, you know. Um, but Man City are just looking very, very dominant. I can't see anyone beating them in the near future. They're just looking too good. Their defence is outstanding. Going forward, they're outstanding. It's going to be a tough one for us on Sunday. I know, man. And I'm up, man. With Man City doing well, man. They're really on course to win the Premier League, man. What do you have to say about this, bro? City sometimes, winning again. Sometimes I wish I keep my thoughts to myself, you know. <laughs> Remember I mentioned Man City to you. That's what I've got to say. I mentioned Man City. I wish I didn't just mention it. I wish I just kept it to myself. Since that day, it's just the same story. And that Western match was... They can score anywhere they want to score. Let me just put it this way. Man City know how to get goals. They know how to break teams out to get goals. The way um, John Stone scored that goal yesterday in, uh, 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 on, uh, on, on Saturday and the assist by um, um, Marius, I was like, whoa. It's it, like, I don't want to say it's easy because the Western was actually a very good team, a very good position. And I don't think we are going to play like West Ham against Man City. I think Man City going to get easy with us because the way we're playing, we might go defend, Bend over. We don't see right now. We will bend over. We know our team sets up. It's evidence. The last couple well, of games, game. very six, good game. We're gonna bend over. City, City is. Maybe we, I hope we can break the deadlock, though. I hope we can just beat them and just break everything. I hope that happens. That's like just one of the things I hope for. But <laughs> we'll see. We have Arsenal at all winning against Leicester. We all thought Arsenal was going to get it against Leicester. But Arsenal come back and win it. Especially going one nil down very early, man. The Gunners back at it again with a 3-1 win. They're doing well. It's good for them. We also <laughs> have um, Sheffield United losing against Liverpool. Our ups winning. Uh, it's also closing the gap against us. By the way, guys, Leicester are one point behind us now. Mm-hmm. Not looking good. Yeah, because they lost. Mm-hmm. We lost, but they, they're still one point behind us, which means that other teams are not far behind. Spurs winning again. You know, so you got Bell winning. <laughs> Bell scoring two goals. Mourinho probably eating up his words. I still think Bell's finish. I've always thought Bell's finish. You know, I'm, I've, I'm, my point is proven between that Bell versus Neymar. Battle, you know, I don't even think there was Neymar. When was that ever about when, 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 they, were, when they were hot in prime? They were both young, yeah, yeah, yeah. When they were both they young just... and they both emerged, they went to Ram, one went to Ram, and you went, went one went to Barcelona, you know, I yeah, was, team Neymar, team Messi, bro. I was, team, I was team Bell, though, and team Ronaldo, Ronaldo I was it? <laughs> and team Bastard, Ronaldo. I, he's not done, I think he's still got it. No, he's done. Oh. He's not done. No, 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 he's level, done. Bro. He moves he's slow. Right. Everything is robotic. It, it hurts. No, 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 no. Like it hurts him to move. Like his last three goals. Yeah, I've he's seen his goal. the same goals. Yes, I've seen his goal. But he, yes, so... watch his game. He's not scoring the same goal from outside, smashing it in. Yes, and finish. The way he finished mm-hmm. the ball. You will never so lose much. that. You will never lose that. And that's it's all you need in this day and age. He's an old player. That's he's he's not young. That you need to get wherever from. Like it's up to you, the manager. If Mourinho keep using Tottenham the way they're using him, I promise you, Bill gonna start every single game because Mourinho knows how to play with these players. He knows how to use his old players. He likes old players. Let me just put it this way. Yeah, he likes. Let me tell you something. Yeah, obviously, I, by no way in hell am I comparing Cristiano Ronaldo and Bell. No way at all. No, no, no. You no, see no. how Cristiano Ronaldo yes. he adapted to his game. He used to play on yes. the left and cut in. He yeah. used his brain. He knew that he hasn't got legs for that anymore. He adapted his game. Bell, people are expecting the same Bell that used to run 90 yards every five minutes. He can't do that. So he's getting older now. He has to adapt to his game. He's but has he adapted to his game? Yeah. Has he adapted his game? For me, it's an game. issue with his fitness. Mm-hmm. It's an issue with his fitness. Yeah. And he's showing recently, he's getting his fitness up. He can prove himself because he's banging in goals. 
And nice goals as well. Nice ones. I um, don't disagree with you that he hasn't been scoring nice goals. He has. But still, he's finished out here. He's done out here, bro. He's a robotic fam. It looks like it hurts, bro, when he moves, bro. It looks like it's hurting, bro. He's trying his best. It hurts. He's still scored two goals in the Premier League. <laughs> Whether or not it hurts, it's still two goals, no? No, that's <laughs> true. It does. We move it straight to the Premier League. You know, goal of... I mean, game of the week. You know? My favourite part of the show. You don't know, of course. You can't troll today, though. Can't I can't troll. troll, but I can congratulate my blood class second team, Arsenal. <laughs> Three one against Leicester. Finally got the win. Finally got the W. Big up men like like a blood class Z. You know. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's good to win, though. I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, it's been a while, man. It's, it looks like we're trying to get away from you know this page number two of the Premier League. It, I don't know if we're tenth of ninth right now, but at least it's progress that we've actually won a game. You know, it's been a while. It's been a while. I'm pleased. <laughs> Leicester's a hard place for us to win. You know, for anyone to go there and win. But we done a thing against Leicester. Pepe was on smoke. He was peppering certain right backs, left backs called Thomas. You know, my my boy. You know, I'm in Pepe. Don't know. Anyway, game of the week. That's mine. What are you man saying? A mook. My game of the week would be the same match you just said, didn't it? The Arsenal Leicester match. Like the Leicester got early goal. No man just ran through. He just bust the shot. One 0 And Arsenal said like maybe shaky, but for some reason they're able to compose themselves and come back. And the way they came back, it was brilliant. Like kudos to them though. I think they had a good week. That was my match of the game, my match right. of the week. It's a good week for the Gooners, man. It's a good week for As- <laughs> Arsenal. What about you, Jax? What was your game of the week, my friend? For me, it was that Tottenham 4-0 win. Ah, um, your boy, Bell. They were, they were clinical, and Bell got his two goals. The first goal was a great ball in, just about onside. And then, of course, we also saw his second goal. You know what, yeah, I haven't Time's seen the, the goals. Right yeah. I have to game. check the highlights, you know. You need to see uh, go watch them goals, man. Them goals are beautiful. So just just his last three goals. Just watch his last three goals. Even other game, like he's been finessing the ball really good. Like I saw the the goal before, like the previous game was good finish. And even Kane, Kane scored a great goal. He opened up like he was gonna finesse it around the keeper, and he just hit it. It was Bill Assis, wasn't it? Was Bill Assis as well? Was it Bill that made assist? I can't remember. I can't remember. I think it was him because he said he got two goals and made that assist. Do you know what's so funny? Okay. We've all been waiting to see this Son, Bell, and Kane up front together. And it's now like when the season's almost done, like <laughs> <laughs> this man wants to throw Bell in. I don't get Mourinho, bro. He's a joke, man, bro. Like, yeah, wait, what do you think? No, Jack said it. Really it was Bell's fit or only? It, uh, maybe it could be his what, fitness. What I reckon it was his fitness. He wasn't ready. He was no, it wasn't. He, that, that was the issue, his fitness. Because ha, was he playing at Real Madrid? No. No, 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 no. No, no so he'd probably need to build his fitness. And knowing him, I told you, like I said, he, he looks like whenever he runs, it hurts him. It hurts him. So it took a long time for him to get to this level right now, to where he is right now. So you can understand mm. that he needed to take this six months. It has taken six months for him to just actually start quite playing games back to back. And this is the first time he's actually played back-to-back games for Spurs, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. I think it's because of his fitness. That's why jokes. Okay. But, like, as you say, it's a bit late in the season now. But if he can yeah. be playing more games, we'll see Tottenham might be a threat for us for top four. Hopefully not. Maybe he's prepping himself up for the Euros if Wales are actually in the Euros. This. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. tough to start still. Pardon? I said I didn't want to face AC Milan at all. I wanted to face them in the final. Yes, yes, we have oh, drawn. We have drawn AC Milan. Milan. How do you feel mm-hmm. about that? It's it's going to be a tough draw because, you, as you can tell, AC Milan they're competing with Inter Milan in Serie A at the moment. Um, but we have the team to do it. I feel like our squad is better than theirs. This is not the AC Milan of twenty years ago. You know, our team is better than theirs. I feel confident that if we can beat AC Milan, we can win the cup. 
but it's all down to to the quarterfinals now, isn't it? So let's wait mm. and see. But very hard to draw because there's some. It's not the quarterfinals. It's the it's the round of sixteen, bro. Where do you think we were? We were just paid, we just oh. played thirty two. You should know this the Europa League. It's the longest it's competition. The longest competition. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I want to play them now. I want to play them in the final. It's like the London Marathon. Right it's like the World Marathon, fam. So out here, you know when they carry the Olympic torch from one country to the next country to the next country. That's the Europa League, fam. You get me? Well, we should beat them, though. We should beat them. Yeah, Milan, I feel, yeah, definitely. Zlatan might not be able to play because he, I think... Yeah, he's, he's not. Injured. He's missing the first half. He got injured. He's missing the first leg, yeah. That's, That's the first match. I know he's, he'll move to McLindelof. 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 He'll see his own boy from Sweden. What's the call? <laughs> Lindelof. And be like, you know what? I'm going to have you, fam, today. Because I know my guy's going to be... My <laughs> never going to fight. He's never going to be like me and you one-on-one. He's going to stay, what's the call? Keep himself free. Maguire always keeps himself free. Whenever you know, he's another player. No, he's actually, a weaker player. I've noticed that. I've actually noticed that Maguire never goes one-on-one with the big, strong guy whenever we've got to play against the strong guy. It's like he's scared. But he's the so biggest defender. Unless the striker goes to the weakest uh, centre back, yeah. then. And, and how do we uh, concede? It always comes from Vindelof getting moved to by that defender. But this, <laughs> yeah, that's how we always concede. I'm like, what? You? And I'm that's like, where, where the hell is Maguire? Oh yeah, he's down there. Like, what's he doing down there? He should be telling mm-hmm. him, I'm the captain, right? <laughs> I'll tell you, know, Vindelof, I'm the captain of this ship. You down there, me, him. One on yeah. one, you, you, one me two. and you, me and you, you, you look at me, look at me. I'm the captain of this ship, you know. Yeah, but that's a real captain out here. Look, them I village mean, type of movement, you know, that village will eat up men like Calvin eat Lewin. Uh, you look at striker. Calvin Lewin in the face and spit on the grass and be like, What? and take Just a piece smile. of the grass and eat it right in front of his face and then and scare the living daylights out of Calvin Lewin. That's the type of defender that uh, village was. He didn't get. He didn't care. Anyway, guys, let us know exactly what you thought your game of the week was, guys. And also what you thought the other games, the ups, you know. <laughs> We're straight into the match preview. Crystal Palace against Manchester United. Manchester United away on Wednesday. A game where we go and get to Crystal Palace. At times we do get the W and at times we do lose a tricky place to go to. But there's no fans. And right now, we don't have time to waste. Three points is needed. We need these three points. And I can only see Manchester United winning. I don't think Zaha will be playing. You know? And I'm hoping that um, he's definitely going to be playing. I I think so, he's injured. I definitely think he's injured, I think. I think so. But he'll, I'm hoping that he'll play by it to speed up things. So we, because, because whenever we play by, we play at least 10 meters ahead. Like, like we play mm-hmm. 10 meters ahead. Like, by just makes us attacking. You know, whenever we play by, we're more attacking. You know, we can do things freely. We don't have to babysit those guys. McFred don't have to babysit anyone because by is there with his pace and he's, he babysits Maguire himself. He's like, I got this, guys. Whenever, so I'm hoping that he starts because we need his pace, and I'm hoping that Daniel James don't start at all. No, honestly speaking, I'm not being rude, but I seen we've seen what we've seen before, and in the, in the old DJs coming back with that, not using his head, you know, in terms of like in the final third and making the right decision passes. We've got too many of that. We've already got more crush on the other side. We don't need another one on the other side. And that's the problem what Jags always says, that when the quality of our team is not good enough because in those final thirds, that tells us that we're not good enough. In the final third, especially when it comes to making those clear-cut decisions and being, um, what's the word again, clinical, we don't have that. Mm-hmm. Top players do. True. To me, I always feel like we've got two babies playing up front, you know. It's always been like that because Marshall is like that and Rashford is like that. They're not clinical, Definitely. two babies playing up front. And 
with I can't even put Mason Greenwood to it because he's supposed to be learning from someone. He's a young boy. Mm-hmm. And Cavani as well. Yeah, he's there, but he's injured. And he's that's the thing about Cavani, he's injured. And yeah. And guys, one thing I want to mention about the previous game, you know, everything that everyone always says about Martial not being able to score goals. And all of this time, I've actually realised that it doesn't matter whoever we play up front. The service is nothing. It's nil. Two touches Mason Green would have playing up front. Before that was Marshall, he had three. Cavani, before he played, he had three touches in the opposition box. They're not getting service. And that's back to the football we play. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about the game against Crystal Palace. Jex, we start with you. Um... I put you in a zone right there, innit? <laughs> I can tell I put you in a deep zone right there, innit? I'm like, yeah, he's right, you know. <laughs> yeah, but coach, you. Um, it's it's a game that we need to win. Um, it's not a de- it's not up for debate. It's Crystal Palace. I know you said sometimes it could be a tricky place to go to, but like you alluded to, there's no fans. Mm-hmm. They haven't got their top man, so we should go there and play like it's our backyard and and give it to them, you know. Um. Zaha I didn't know was out, but that's a benefit for us because when Crystal Palace play without Zaha, they never win. I yeah. think their record without Zaha is ridiculous. So if he's out, then <laughs> it's only a benefit for us. And my boy, young Eze, the player that I think is going to be a, a wonderful player when he grows up. Um, I feel like he's still injured. I'm not sure. If he's injured as well, then we looking quite weak, you know? So we should win that game, definitely. And Mook, what do you think? Now you just missed your essay today, man. For me, it's my, it's, it's my rookie of the year, though. My rookie of the yeah. year. I like him. And I actually, I, 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 want, I want to see him shine. I mean, I want to see that kid shine. But like you guys said, we have to get the three point definite win. We don't care if we play against um He, even if Zaha was there, Essie is there, they got the full squad. We should be going to it. Crystal Palace with what we've been doing so far this season with our record, I'm got, I'm I'm not confident but optimistic that I might go, we might go there and go get a three point, and that's what I want because of our record this season. But it's gonna be a tricky place to go. We should just bear that in mind and go there with the right mentality, go there to get the three point. It's Crystal Palace. We're not playing another Chelsea. Yes, sir. It's Crystal Palace. Mm-hmm. We don't want to see no McFred. Nah, man. No McFred, man. Just one of you. One of you is enough. I think Fred needs to oh. sit. After the game against Chelsea, he should sit and then Van der Beek should come in. True. Yeah. What, what, what is this? Like, seriously, like, you know, even when I was watching against Chelsea, I thought we, all we needed <laughs> is a centre midfielder that just keeps the ball in midfield. And you're like, the guy don't like him, clearly. We remember I said that this the time when Popo got injured, this one will know whether Van der Beek was Oli's transfer or not, or whether he likes him. Exactly. Or not. And he's still not playing. He's still not playing, even though Pop was injured. Oli did not sign that guy, bro. I'm telling uh, you. And, and you know what? Even if you did not sign that guy, yeah, you're stupid. You're a fool. You're stupid. You're a fool. Because that's everybody can clearly see that's a good player you should be playing ahead of McFred. You know, even if you swallow your bloody pride and play the guy, bro, the guy would have probably got you better results in the mid on the pitch. You know, why are we using James and, and you are, Mark, why? Like I said, you told Pogba to switch up his position this season, right? If we go play like Van der Beek, right? Why can't you like just mix some as a manager? Use mix some adjustment to the way you put your tactics that can include Van der Beek. Because we we need players like him in the pitch. How, do you know why Chelsea dominated us yesterday? Because they had six, seven players. He was good on the ball. With the new manager they got, they're going to play good. And they were, under, we the, they were on the guys. We got all these defenders. We, got, we had defenders in the... Because I see Fred and McTominay as defenders. I mean, honest with you. Nah, For me, they are. They are, every time I see these two, I know we are going out there to defend. So you're missing on the creative side. So where's the creative side? And that's why we don't go forward. You just mentioned the strikers are not getting the services they deserve. Yeah. So 
If they don't get the services they deserve, how they gonna make so all we do is just play with chances. Whatever chances we get, score. We teams play, they big, they build the play. Man City build the play, Chelsea build the play. We just sit there and try to break this place up. Why? Why can't you build something? Let this team try to break an open play, open match. Get me. But definite win, though. We need to win. Definite win. Unable to was create chances for, for strikers, but yet, yeah, you know, Martial out in it. You get me. You know, Cavani plays El Matador still still has the same amount of goals as Martial. I True. don't get it. Mason Greenwood plays up front. We can't. We can't score. Um, have you noticed that none of us attackers have shined this season? But yeah, Martial out because he's lazy. He's not scoring goals. But yeah, no one's not scoring consistently goals. up front apart from me. Um, for me, it's 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 not about the goal scoring. It's about what the players are doing in and around the box and what they're doing to help get the ball back and help with the build up play. That's mm-hmm. where Martial has fallen off for me this season. He hasn't scored goals, but at times he's looked a bit lazy compared to a 34-year-old Cavani, who's a workhorse, you know? So um, for me, that's the, the big difference from Martial for me, not just the goals. We move straight into the preview against Manchester City, the Manchester Derby. Yes. Boy, 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 boy. A game that I would like to just skip you know, I would like to wake up the following day. I would like to wake up on a Monday and not being able to have watched that match and not be able oh, to when's the game? Sunday. When's the game? Sunday. Oh, I'm watching my hair on Sunday. I can't watch that uh, game. Yeah, so. fam, I'm telling you now, man, the Manchester Derby, those ups. Manchester United, I'm not confident. Guys, I'm not going to lie to you, guys, straight away. I know we're going to get it, you know. We might as well just go there, give them the Vaseline. Bend over straight up, bro. What's the point, bro? What is the point? What is the point? I know my man's gonna go defensive. We're bending over. He's gonna go defensive and bend over, man. You know what I want to see, bro? Do you remember when C packed us in 6 1 and Ferguson was the manager? Yeah, I think we got it was down to 10 men. It was 3 1 at half time. Fergie said attack. He still wanted to attack. I just want to see the man them. Go back and forth with City. We shouldn't sit back. Mm-hmm. We need to yeah. come out. Shows like if we lose four one, and we we had created chances, we were energetic, we were aggressive, we were passionate. Then so be it. But I don't want us to get packed in and we're just sitting back, sitting back. I'll turn off the TV. I don't want to see that. No, yeah, sure about you, Amok. Like it's gonna be a difficult match for us to play, but. We should try to get the win, not just go there, sit back and see what happens to see if they can get a draw. Because no, what we've seen from all of this season is when we play these top clubs, we just go back and sit and see if we can get a draw or at least counter them and still nick the game. If that's this game plan, it works again. Man City, go sit there and see if you nick the game. Go for it. That's only if it works. But I want to see us going head to head with Man City, like Jake just said, attack, play, play open football. Because Man City find it difficult if you play open football with them. Mm-hmm. So if you want to go stiffen a little bit, they got players who are good on the ball. They got geniuses. They tactically good on the ball. So just not going to keep the ball better than us. But Oli got built. This is another test for Oli. We just mentioned Chelsea, which just came up with the apps yesterday. This is another test. If Man City is on a good run, if Oli can break this run for Man City. I'll be one of the most happiest fans. Yeah, but I, I doubt it, man. I don't think we're going to win, man. Definitely not going to. Don't think we will I'm win. Hope and optimism. Yeah, we yeah, you can have optimism. We'll be happy if we do, you know, get me. But I know I'm, we're going to that game not in the best of confidence, you know. Definitely. True. Anyway, guys, we have come straight to the end of the show. Do let us know exactly what you your match predictions will be for that game against Manchester City and also Crystal Palace. You know, we get to the part where we ask the guys where you can find them. So, Jax, we want to start with you. Where can the people find you, my brother? Down below, Jax underscore United. You don't know. And what about you, Amuk? Where can the people find you? 
They can find me on Instagram, prettyflacco underscore 16. And of course, guys, you know, as usual, remember to follow the official Red United account, which is Red United TV1 on the Instagram. And of course, the official TikTok account, which is Red United TV. And of course, you can follow me on my personal Instagram account, which is Averin underscore Spice, and also for the Twitter. And of course, remember, guys, to subscribe, smash that like button. Remember to share, of course, as always. Remember to share to people that you like, people that you don't like, of course. And ladies, remember to share to those exes. And remember to share to your current man and tell them that you found a man that's way better than him. Like, you get me? And as always, remember, guys, to keep it united. And remember to keep it ready united because we out, baby. Peace out.